Jamaica Who is the immigrant? If we are living in the same land and sharing the same sun and we welcome to Impact Talks, Ms. Juliana Sakai, a journalist and documentary filmmaker. She is the photographer behind the beautiful Immigrant Project and is writing a book on immigration in Brazil through the eyes of her ancestors. She worked as co-producer in the feature doc, The Human Trial, and as director's assistant in Netflix's doc series, Making a Murderer, after working in newspapers and the International Documentary Association. She has directed short documentaries about art and social issues such as anti-girl and bleu et rouge welcome to impact thank Juliana. you thank you so much for having me oh yeah oh, you're welcome so good to have you because it's like a journalist that you are let's talk yeah. are you ready yes <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about how you came to united states in the first place tell us briefly yeah sure mm -hmm. i was a, a i was a journalist in brazil i mean okay. I, I i think i'm still you are a journalist yeah. once a journalist. journalist always a journalist yeah i think so and but yes. um i left during or a little bit before the big crisis i was mm -hmm. looking for you know, some some other path and some more time to um, tell stories. Okay. Journalism, you, you have to write, you know, five or six different things. Mm -hmm. I needed more time to tell stories. But then when I look back, it's pretty exciting when you see how many newspapers are shutting down, how many people, oh, no. you know, how many journalists are being let go. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of trying to n not drown in that crisis, I think. I know. So how do you combine being a journalist and filmmaking? I came here to film school. Okay. I went back to school when I was oh, I 28. See. So yeah, so that's why I chose Los Angeles. I think it's like the mecca. I know if you're going to do um, that, you might as well be in Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> so have you? do you think America offers you that opportunity to do those things? The yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I do think, you know, like a film in Brazil uh, right now, it, it's it's definitely growing. Mm -hmm. But if I needed to take a risk, I needed some place that could you know, foster me to mm -hmm. become a filmmaker. And I think Los Angeles is like, you know, um, film oriented, of course, but um, but also the amount of people who are yes. here who respect documentary and who, you know, are driven by that mm -hmm. is the thing that inspires me the most, Mo way more than being in Los Angeles per se. I understand completely. Now tell us about the beautiful immigrant project. You put it so well. What is the inspiration behind it? Um, my friends, I would say, I think it's natural. I don't mm -hmm. know if you have that, but like you, I, I, at one point I realized I was surrounded by people who were dealing with the same struggles. So yes. it's natural, like suddenly I have all these international friends. They're all, you know, um, they're all experiencing trauma yes. daily in so many ways. Um, being away from home, not oh. having their family, struggling with like all this bureaucracy and hate. Mm -hmm. um, so at one point, um, my house became like a healing place. Mm. We were coming, people would come to my house, we'd have wine and talk about the struggles. And then I'm like, you know what? I, I think I should, you know, um, chronicle uh, that. Yeah, and I, I think let's do something. Let's do portraits of you and and honestly. In the beginning, they all hated me so much no because kidding. they are, they are, you know, like people who are so um, normal. Like, I mean, in a sense of like they don't like camera. They don't know how to be in front of camera yes. or, you know, if, in, and be the center of attention. So that was part of the process, too. Um, them like seeing themselves as I was seeing them. So what do the pictures tell us? How the, the portraits, are. what message do the portraits that you take, what do they convey as a message? Um, I do want to, like, show the beauty that I see on them. Oh, so, see. So usually they start, you know, like, saying, I'm not going to do this. It's just for you, Juliana, just because I love you. And then by the end, they are crying. They're thanking just so because grateful. it is it, it's very vulnerable. They are very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to connect the word immigration to beauty Absolutely. And, and being brave. We um, need to own that yeah. word in a positive way, especially in this atmosphere. So let's talk about your heritage. You have a really interesting ancestry. You talk about in your bio that I read about how that heritage has shaped you. You talk about being of Japanese, Portuguese, migrants in Brazil. That's your heritage. But you also have mm -hmm. your great grandmother who was an enslaved impregnated slave by slave master. Exactly. I just discovered that. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And that it changed the way you look at the diaspora, how you look at life. How is that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think moving to the U.S. Mm -hmm. changed something in me because in Brazil, 
I'm Juliana. Yes. Juliana, period. Yes. Here, what are you all the time? Like, what are you? Where <laughs> okay. you come from? Like, people stop me on the street to ask me, what am I? It's not like where I am so from. So in terms or, of ethnicity, race, Yeah, they're all very that. confused. Uh, okay. You know, like, people are not seeing me, but, like, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm all mixed. So okay. I'm... I'm I learned to say I'm half Japanese and half Brazilian. Mm -hmm. um, but the truth is, I grew up Brazilian. I don't have Japanese culture in me. So Correct. my identity is not that. But then it pushed me to understand what, you know, my blood is. Mm -hmm. um, until, you know, I knew I was Portuguese, Spanish, you know, African. Everybody mm -hmm. in Brazil is. But I was surprised. Right. Um, the DNA test came back, you know, with... Um, more than 20 countries um and i think that means a lot in, like brazil is kind of like that yes but the thing that struck me the most was definitely n knowing that i was you know that my great grandmother great great grandmother, great -grandmother mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was um an enslaved woman mm -hmm. um I, and then i found a document that said she belonged to such person which was wow. super powerful for me yeah. it's like she's you know, she was treated like a thing. Like we know, she. Yes. You know, it and used you to never be. thought that you had that blood. I I knew, but mm -hmm. it's different from like actually proving that. Like Correct. we all know. Like I, you know, I have darker skin, so I knew mm -hmm. I was African somehow. Mm -hmm. But like knowing that so close to me, mm -hmm. you know, the trauma. Yes, um, everything and, associated with it. Yeah, and then once, and then I didn't know for sure mm -hmm. the story behind, but then I. I discovered who was his great great grandkid, the owner, mm -hmm. and I convinced him to give me his DNA sample, which was crazy, and he gave to me. Um, oh. um, and then we were related, so that was powerful because for me it shifted um, of like thinking I am not only the oppressed person in Brazil mm -hmm. but also part of the oppressor. The oppressor. Yeah. So it's still something you I'm processing. You know what? That is something to process. And I have to tell you, I have thought about that also. You know, I'm from Africa. And so every time someone tells me, oh, I found my ancestry, blah, blah, blah. I'm from Cameroon. I, I'm excited that they're from Cameroon, but then I feel guilty. So maybe, the, And I've never really shared that. I feel guilty. Like, could it have been my grandfather that sold your family to slavery or your... You know, I, I understand that feeling that you mm -hmm. feel that you're the, at the same time you're from the oppressed, but you also feel like you're that history of the oppressor. In my case, Cameroon was a real one of the ports of um, slavery. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes everyone and so many people say they're from Cameroon. I, I am from thinking, Cameroon. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Cameroon. So I, I apologize. No, oh, well, <laughs> you know, where you, you should apologize. be the last one to apologize. <laughs> oh, the Portuguese one the where the. the yeah, they the were people brutal. Who they were they were really horrible. But you yeah. know, I know I understand that feeling. So yeah. that really, you said, has shaped the way you see the diaspora. But mm -hmm. I have to tell you, do you think when Americans ask you where are you from or what are you, do you think it's out of ignorance or they just innocently want to understand? Because sometimes as immigrants, we are defensive. Mm -hmm. Do you think? I have I have two different answers. Okay. Like when people ask me that, mm -hmm. if people are coming to me like I want to learn, I want to understand, mm -hmm. I say I'm half Japanese and half mm -hmm. Brazilian. Mm -hmm. If people don't, they are coming like you see like they are you know their tone is different. I say I'm Brazilian and mm -hmm. let them be confused for a second <laughs> until they're like, mm, but that doesn't and I I have to explain like yes. you know what. You know, like it's not like five different boxes like mm -hmm. you have in a document and you have to sign up. Like I don't have any boxes for myself in the U.S. because Correct. what am I? Am I, you know, from Latin and then, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Asian and uh, a little bit of everything. All of that, so, yes. So, yeah, depending on the where they're coming from, I yes. I'm, have It just a, depends on the attitude mm -hmm. also. Yeah. So you have great passion for immigrant issues, I can see, mm -hmm. and you really love people. Where do you think the United? How do you feel about the United States now? Are you scared of where this country is going in terms of the precedent that it's setting on the world stage in terms of immigration? Definitely, I think. Um, well, like I think, I believe, especially in California, we lived in a bubble where we were hopeful mm -hmm. that the election was not going to turn out the way it was, the way it did, the way it did. Mm -hmm. and then you know, like everybody else, I cried, I had to grieve. I know. Um, but it's a constantly, you know traumatic experience I would say like you turn on TV and every day like you see the kids Ugh. you know who aren't at the border um, oh, no. arrested or now sexually assaulted and it, it doesn't stop so it's it's pretty upsetting especially because it's it's going to other countries as mm -hmm. well such as you know Brazil yes um so yeah I'm, I'm really hoping uh, a miracle happens do you think Americans are being brainwashed about 
the rules or the immigrants in this country? I would say... Because we talk about ignorance and if you look at the news and the messages that, you know, are being put out there, not just by media, but even people in government or the White House, do you think Americans, or are they just not interested in getting to know immigrants, really? I Yeah, I don't think it's like they're being, I think historically they are. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like this has been happening of like believing that the concept of nationality, like mm-hmm. being, you know, like the, the borders, I think is very strong here. And I, I see all the complications that come with it. So I think it, historically, you know, they've been believing of the other, you mm-hmm. know, the outsider, the, outsider. the alien. That's but why aren't I they also actually, went, Aren't they also the yeah. other, though? That's exactly. <laughs> and human beings, we're all yeah. human beings. Yeah, like that's the thing. I mean, forget, that it, forget, I mean, the natives, but everybody else. Yeah. We are all the other. Yeah. Aren't we all? Yeah. They forgot, they completely forgot this country belonged to somebody else, I think, and, and we should remember, remind them that. What role do you think media has to play with this as a journalist? What do you think, how can media change its narrative and maybe turn things around? Well, yeah, I, I do think um, that's one of the reasons I moved to film, because mm-hmm. newspapers are now being bought from, you know, um, by big companies and and I think it's very hard for a journalist to actually tell stories that can change. That's what I believe, unfortunately. So I moved to documentary because of that. Okay. And I do believe that the power right now is in art. I think art is the thing that can change something. And hopefully I'm doing my, my part with this exhibit and this book. You're actually doing that. So wh- how can we get to see your work and... So I we have an Instagram beautiful immigrant project. Mm-hmm. Um, I always love to have like new people reaching out to me to say like I want to be part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely I'm really open to that. And then I have a blog called um, ibrazil.com okay. where I tell all these stories. I'm, That's yeah. wonderful. And l- let me tell you that you are doing an amazing job. If everybody just played their part and did what they're supposed to do, we could make a difference. Thank you. So thank you so much for coming. Thank and you. I hope you come back. And uh, thank you for sharing your story. This is Impact with Pamela and Chang on KPFK 90.7 FM. We've come to the end of our show, Impact. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Team TV, Voice of Immigrants in America. See you next time on Impact.